Um, we just drove by a cop, so it's, hopefully this doesn't count as distracted driving. Um, but we're in a self-driving car, or self-assisted driving car, so I think we're safe. What is up, you guys? Matt McKeever here, driving down to Windsor to see my good buddy, John, hanging out with my buddy, Mitt, who's driving. And so both myself and Mitt are CPAs, and we thought, hey, why not shoot some videos talking about becoming a CPA? So this video is going to focus on, should you become a CPA? And just to give you a little bit of background, myself, I've always loved being an entrepreneur. Um, I always loved the idea of real estate investing, and I ended up going to university for business, decided to become a CPA, and went through the whole process. Worked for BDO for five years, the public accounting firm, then went into industry and worked for a publicly traded uh, pharmaceutical company where I was the sole financial controller. At one point in time, we hit a quarter of a billion dollar market cap, FYI. Anyways, uh, that's kind of my background on becoming a CPA. I retired at the age of 31 because of my real estate investing, but being a CPA gave me a huge advantage as a real estate investor and gave me all sorts of additional tangential benefits. But we'll get into that in a little bit. Mitt, do you want to just introduce yourself? Hey everyone, my name is Mitt. Uh, I'm the owner of Mitt CPA. It's an accounting practice based out of Southwestern Ontario, servicing real estate, uh, small business, and medium-sized businesses, including tech startups. So I've also been entrepreneurial throughout my life. I uh, would actually sell trading card game, uh, trading cards uh, to make money to fund my lifestyle at the time. And throughout uh, high school, I always was entrepreneurial in a sense, but I uh, never really ended up executing on, on, on much then. Um, but I always like to do the analysis. And so in high school is when I just kind of decided to become uh, a CPA. Awesome. So yeah, so let's just talk about what are some of the advantages or values of becoming a CPA? Or actually, before we even do that, let's just get rid of one or two misconceptions. Do you need to be really good at math to be a CPA? What are your thoughts, Mitt? No, you don't need to be good at math at all. Um, as long as you've you know, passed, I would say, middle school math so if you graduated yeah. from like from grade eight uh, or you basically do actually I don't even think you need to know that if you learn if you know multiplication division addition and subtraction and you know and and you're willing to spend the time to learn how to use a calculator or Microsoft Excel yeah. specifically Microsoft Excel you can excel at being a CPA yeah 100% agree so far too many people think that they need to be amazing at math in order to become a CPA completely false in my opinion but so let's get into what's some of the value of being a CPA and so my thought first is if you're interested in being an entrepreneur if you're interested in being a business owner or a business leader uh, being a CPA is a fantastic uh, kind of a fantastic way to learn a lot about business in a short period of time um, just to give some perspective in case you don't really know what a CPA is if you're articling at a, at a public accounting firm Essentially what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing the books or double checking the math, double checking the business, and it really just gives you an insight to a large variety of businesses. And that's what I loved about being a CPA in my first few years was just, I was literally getting paid to learn about other people's businesses. And then as the CPA, as the auditor or the reviewer or just even the uh, compiler, you get to talk and deal with the business owner and the people doing the actual accounting of the business one-on-one. -on -one. And it's just like, it's an extremely unique opportunity for such a young individual to be able to have. Yeah, and I definitely agree with, with that. I think a lot of people don't actually un re understand or realize that the opportunity that they have is that when they're looking at the accounting numbers, a lot of them just think, okay, is this a number? Does it agree to that receipt or does it agree to that or this? And they don't really think of the uh, of the big picture, understanding what is, that imp what is the impact to that business. And I, again, as you mentioned, what I loved is I got to sit down with business owners and understand why are you doing this? Like why? Like I don't understand. Like you're you're buying these things, you're doing that. It's not the same as you did last year. Can you tell me why? And not just putting an explanation down for, for in the public accounting firm for explanations for variance or anything like that, but also just from my general curiosity. So as I was mentioning earlier, like I was always entrepreneurial when I was younger, um, and when I took my grade eleven accounting course, I was able to, I, I was able to actually like. Uh, conceptualize and understand that no matter what any business always needed like an accountant or accounting 
Um, and we had the CPA in Ontario come into uh, our school at the time and sort of talk about how CPAs really act more as an advisor to the business. Yes, you're going to get into the weeds uh, and uh, you know have sometimes have to do the day-to-day -day accounting and, and just that business management. Yeah. But you're able to also see and understand so many different businesses. So for me, when I did the CPA, I knew if I could get the designation and if I could learn uh, accounting correctly, that no matter what, I can go into I could go into any business and understand it. And one day, once I was able to see all these businesses, I could decide what business I want to do and actually execute it and do it the right way by following the numbers uh, just versus just following like my gut instinct. I'm not a, an amazing singer or an artist or uh, you know a, a great designer, so I wouldn't be able to just identify a niche or come up with a, and I'm not an engineer, so I'm not gonna come up with a cool, amazing product. Uh, but I, what I can do though is leverage my years of accounting experience, learning and seeing how other business owners and individuals with expertise in different areas were able to uh, run their businesses and take the best practices from each business and merge them together. Yeah, if you want to become an entrepreneur but don't know what business you want to start and don't have an idea of the industry or how you're going to get started as that entrepreneur but you know you want to be your own boss, I think becoming a CPA is a fantastic way to do it because it's just going to show you a plethora of different businesses and you're going to learn them inside and out and you're going to be able to network with a ton of business owners as well. Yeah. I think that's something that a lot of young CPAs don't take full advantage of. The fact that you're getting put in front of millionaires on a regular basis. You're getting put in front of people that are making six, sometimes seven figures on a regular basis. It's just so powerful, it's so amazing, and you're getting paid to learn at the same time. Honestly, if I could go back and tell myself to do it all over again, I would tell myself to become a CPA again because it just gave me so much power. In fact, talking about the value of that networking, the way I met Mitt was he was actually auditing the publicly traded pharmaceutical company I was working for at the time, yeah. and that's how we got to know each other. And some of my best friends I met through becoming a CPA and going through that CPA process. So I highly recommend, if you're interested in becoming an entrepreneur, you should strongly think about a background in accounting. Because at the end of the day, every business needs an accounting function. Right, and as like accounting becomes automated over time, or the bookkeeping function does, really the CPA really prepares you to be an advisor to business yeah. owners. Also, an advantage really by getting your CPA also is in the worst case scenario, if you're a CPA and you go to be an entrepreneur and you fail, your worst case scenario is you're gonna go back to getting a middle class job. Mm -hmm. um, you're always gonna be able to secure a position that's gonna be able to put food on the table for yourself and your family uh, and make a decent living. But if you're able to then leverage your entrepreneurship mindset and some of the other real estate investing practices that you speak on your channel, it really set you uh, light years ahead of your other colleagues. Yeah, one of the first advantages I had as a real estate investor was the fact that I really understood how to use Excel, how to put together kind of projections on what my uh, proposed real estate investment was going to do and then I could compare that against other investments and it just really provided me with insight that a lot of other first-time real estate investors don't get to experience. So again, if you're interested in becoming a real estate investor, I think that going through and becoming an accountant or learning more about accounting can be a fantastic opportunity to get paid to learn and if you're going to work at say a smaller firm uh, while you're articling or being a CPA, you're going to probably do a lot of personal taxes. And one of the first insights I got from being a CPA <laughs> was a lot of the millionaires that we had as clients had significant real estate holdings. And not only that, you get to interact with these individuals. So often, like Mitt was kind of saying, you can get off on a tangent with them and discuss with them, like, why are you investing in real estate? Or why did you buy this property? Or why did you make this investment? Funny enough, when I I was auditing your company at the time. Uh, yeah, actually. We, we actually first started off talking about stocks and slowly transitioned over a couple of weeks into real estate. And, you know, short, uh, shortly after that, that's when, you know, Matt was able to walk me through some of the videos he's basically put on his YouTube of how to, like, the Burr investment strategy, uh, investing in real estate, uh, and how you kind of go about doing it. And from there now, we, we actually uh, invest in properties together yeah. and plan to continue investing many more to come. Yeah, so that's actually a great point. I'd kind of forgotten about that, but literally 
that's how Mitt kind of got into real estate investing was I started sharing with him my Excel spreadsheets of some of my investments. Yeah, and funny thing is I had previously looked at it when I was in university and, uh, and prior to becoming a CPA, but in the mix of, you know, work and life, you kind of forget these things and, uh, you know, being able to find another like-minded person as a CPA who understood the way you know how to analyze numbers and really trust it, um, it really gave you that advantage to be able to, uh, I guess, dive deep into real estate and, and yeah. being a CPA. 100% agree. And so yeah, the lessons I learned about Excel and the things I learned about Excel really helped me and aided me as a real estate investor. But another misconception about becoming a CPA that I'd like for us to discuss is that all CPAs are book nerds. That's a huge one. And I can remember literally when I was thinking about becoming a CPA, at the time my girlfriend's uh, uncle was talking to me. He had an MBA, he was a successful marketing businessman. And he was telling me, Matt, you got too much personality. Don't become a CPA. Like, uh, you know, it's only book nerds and number nerds and you don't want to do that. And honestly, that's such an unfair characterization of CPAs, of accountants, because while th that certainly is true of some of them, it's not true of all accountants. And in fact, a lot of people use their CPA or their accounting background simply as a springboard to get into more creative or interesting endeavors. Yeah, I, I totally echo that statement. I think across any industry, in any role, you'll find people who are uh, more quiet and shy and book nerdy, and there's uh, there's others who are more social, outgoing, and entrepreneurial. Um, actually, for CP, like CPA Ontario now is really pushing how CPAs are business advisors. Yeah. And right now, especially with the tech space in Toronto really growing, there's actually a program for this company called Luminari, where they're actually placing CPAs with tech startups to help uh, people from non-accounting backgrounds work with a, with a CPA who's looking to get involved and provide that business advice. Because as a CPA, you get to see so much. Sometimes you forget the little things. Like you, like from seeing businesses, you know how, uh, you know, not having separate bank accounts for personal and business yeah. is a factor. But a lot of people end up, that I do for real, like for uh, the personal taxes or business taxes, is they end up using business and personal. And you know, as an accountant or a CPA coming through the process, I knew, it becomes such a nightmare for bookkeeping and tracking things that you want to keep things separate. Also, you get to see uh, certain functions and controls that work properly at other companies. And then you know when you want to start your own company, what to implement and what will work and what won't. So even when I started my own accounting practice, I was able to take the best practices that I learned from the accounting practice I worked at and yeah. the different businesses I saw. And I was able to leverage certain like online tools and uh, methodologies uh, that I wouldn't have been able to obtain otherwise. Yeah, 100% agree. And another misconception I think a lot of people have towards becoming a CPA, towards becoming an accountant, is that it's all just about the numbers. But in fact, a large portion of it, particularly if you're going to get into auditing, is documenting the processes and the systems that businesses have in place. And honestly, if you're looking to become an entrepreneur, if you're looking to scale up your business, you're either going to need to become extremely familiar with this, or you're going to need someone on your team that is. Because no business, like, even if you're an amazing whatever the business is, you're an amazing chef, you can't, if you want to grow your business, you can't be like creating every single product. You need to be able to systematize it. You need to put in uh, checks and balances in place in order to do that. One of the big things that I was mentioning there was simply this misconception and uh, it's a disservice to accounting, it's a disservice to CPAs because there's a lot more to it than just understanding the numbers. And understanding the processes and the principles in place that these businesses are operating under is extremely important because, again, any business that you want to scale is going to need to get better at documenting and implementing those processes. No, I 100% agree. When I first uh, was thinking of becoming an accountant, I was like, I'm good with numbers, I've done uh, the bookkeeping function in uh, through a high school co-op placement that I did along with my accounting courses and then when I actually started in the workplace a lot of it was really documenting and let me tell you um, the reason why I even chose accounting in the first place is because I, I wanted to avoid writing as much as possible I hated writing my English essays uh, <laughs> uh, but as a result of my job I, I learned to improve my written communication skills and it provides a lot of value um, you can go out and try to create new processes and systems, but if you can leverage uh, existing businesses, processes, and uh, you're able to significantly shortcut your, your path to being a successful business, you don't have to go through all the uh, trials and errors and failures before succeeding. Yeah, 100% agree. 
it just it it's unfortunate that there's these misconceptions that accountants are just book nerds and that accounting's really just this one thing because it to me it's just such an amazing launch pad or springboard into your entire future as well understanding taxes there's a lot of value in that i know a lot of people avoid the idea of taxes because uh, I don't know, again, it's a misconception, but like not understanding finances, not understanding taxes, not understanding businesses, processes, and procedures. Well, if you want to become an entrepreneur, it's extremely difficult to become a successful entrepreneur. And in fact, as a CPA, I often saw when we'd be doing the taxes on some of these smaller businesses that were trying to scale up, that often the reason they were failing wasn't that they had a bad business idea, but they said a bad implementation and they weren't actually tracking the key metrics they needed to in order to figure out what was going to lead to their success and their future growth. Anything else you want to kind of talk about why people should consider becoming a CPA, Matt? I think we covered a lot of the topics. If there's anything else that you don't think we've covered, and if I think of anything else, um, let us know in the comment comments section below. Otherwise, you can uh, come to my YouTube channel and learn some accounting basics. If you don't actually plan on becoming a CPA, uh, actually going back, there's actually some stuff you could actually talk about, which is if you don't want to spend so much money on professional fees and taxes and all that, being a CPA trying to start your businesses, you can. Uh, reduce your costs in that sense yeah. and you're able to there's a lot of people out there uh, who will provide advice to your business and having this experience and knowledge will allow you to uh, cut through filter all fil yes filter through uh, a lot of the noise that's out there and really be able to find the key individuals who are going to uh, provide value to your business yeah so obviously we're a little bit biased but I would definitely recommend if you're thinking about becoming a CPA to look into it further. I got a ton of personal value from it. I'm so happy I personally did it. I'm pretty sure Mint is as well. Yeah. And so yeah, that's it for this video guys. Like Mint mentioned, he's actually got a few videos on his own YouTube channel documenting kind of what an income statement is, what a balance sheet is. And regardless of, I guess one other side note actually I want to get into too, this is going to be a tangential <laughs> video, is the value if you want to just become like an investor and invest in stocks and stuff. The value of understanding and being able to read a balance sheet, an income statement, and a cash flow statement, as well as the MDNA disclosures. And understanding how they all interact and work with and one relate. Another. Yeah, because you can look at a company and it can have a great income statement, but if that cash flow is not on point, that business can still fail. Or if it's got a great cash flow statement, but that income statement isn't on point, that business can still fail. Same with if its balance sheet is really dirty and it could their debt could get called at any moment. Even though it's on a trajectory to be super successful, that business could still fail. So actually as like just a, a personal investor and investing in my TBSA and RSP, being a CPA has been very helpful to myself as well and able to identify uh, you know, interesting companies to potentially invest in, particularly because I enjoy investing in small cap companies. Um, being able to dive into the uh, financial statements is a huge benefit. So if you guys want to learn more about financial statements, jump over to Mitch's channel. If you guys would like me to talk more about being a CPA, about accounting, or about just general business stuff, let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel, and until next time, remember, Make it money as a team sport. There's more than enough money in this world for us to all make it. But, I mean, if you can't read a balance sheet or income statement, do you even know what you're doing? Thanks, guys. Bye!